hidden for decades. Photographs captured not by American spacecraft, but by Soviet probes braving the furnace of Venus. Locked away during the Cold War, these images defied expectations, revealing a jagged, complex world beneath the clouds. Now, physicist Michio Kaku has brought them to light, and what they show is shaking planetary science to its core. Could we have misunderstood our sister planet all along? Are these snapshots a glimpse into Earth's future? From scorched plains to strange anomalies, these long-forgotten photos are rewriting what we thought we knew about Venus, and maybe about ourselves. Hidden treasures from Venus. In the middle of the Cold War, the Soviet Union's Venera probes achieved what no one else had. They captured the first ever photographs from the surface of Venus. But instead of sharing them with the world, they locked them away. Why? Politics. These photos weren't just scientific curiosities. They were state secrets. As space became the new battlefield for global prestige, revealing any misstep or unexpected result could threaten national image. So these stunning images of alien terrain sat unseen, hidden in Soviet archives. Even more concerning was the scientific confusion the photos sparked. The terrain didn't match expectations. Instead of featureless rock or perpetual clouds, the images showed detailed broken surfaces, strange shapes, and possible signs of tectonics. For Soviet officials, that meant trouble. These wrong results might look like errors, casting doubt on the probes themselves. So to avoid embarrassment, they restricted access to only elite Soviet researchers. Scientists trusted to keep quiet. While American missions focused on Mars, NASA and Western scientists remained in the dark about what Venus really looked like. The broader scientific community was forced to rely on limited radar and telescope data. No one knew the Soviets had already peered beneath the clouds and uncovered a landscape of jagged plains and rocky textures. This kept the global conversation about Venus stalled for years. If the images had been shared sooner, planetary science might have taken a different path. The veil lifted decades later. Michio Kaku, known for turning complex science into everyday conversation, brought these photos back into public view. He highlighted the significance of what was captured and questioned why such monumental data had remained hidden for so long. These are the first color photos from another planet's surface, Kaku explained, and almost no one saw them. By reviving these lost visuals, he reignited curiosity and a new wave of questions about what else we still don't know about Venus. As more people finally got to see what Venus really looked like, one question hung heavy in the air. Why were these photos buried for so long? To find the answer, we need to explore how Cold War secrecy shaped what the world was allowed to see and why the truth was only revealed decades later. Why the silence? Until now, when the Soviet Union launched the Venera missions, they weren't just sending probes to Venus, they were crafting a narrative of power. Information about space exploration was filtered through a thick layer of state control. The USSR didn't just manage successes, they managed perception. And the last thing they wanted was the West seeing proof that their missions had gone further than anyone else's. So even though their probes were sending back never before seen images of another planet's surface, the Soviets kept them under wraps. These photos weren't celebrated or studied. They were hidden alongside military blueprints. Venus became a propaganda tool used to reinforce the idea that it was just a scorched, lifeless wasteland. If the probes found something unexpected, like strange rock formations or surface features that didn't fit the official line, they simply wouldn't talk about it. That mindset started to change after the fall of the Soviet Union. Suddenly, decades of closed archives were open. Scientific institutions across Russia and Europe began reevaluating old data. With new technology and freedom to ask hard questions, some researchers started combing through old Venera files. What they found was astonishing. Detailed images, terrain data, even surface audio. But without a strong public voice, these revelations didn't reach far. That's where Michio Kaku stepped in. As a physicist and science communicator, he took these obscure images and brought them into the spotlight. Kaku didn't just decode the science, he told the story. This is one of the most extraordinary lost archives in space history, he said. By reframing the Venera images as a long hidden discovery, he reawakened interest in a planet most had written off as boring. Venus, it turned, 
out had been waiting to speak. We just hadn't been listening. And when we finally did look closely at those images, what we saw changed everything. Venus wasn't smooth or simple. It was jagged, it was violent, it was alien. The photos didn't just confirm past theories, they raised new ones. Let's take a closer look at what the Venera probes actually captured and why those visuals continue to spark debate today. What the photos actually show, when people imagine Venus, they often picture endless yellow clouds or a dull cracked surface. But the Venera images tell a different story. They show a planet shaped by case, scarred by geological violence. The photos reveal sharp ridges, uneven planes, and fractured surfaces, evidence of tectonic movement. These aren't vague outlines. They're real images sent back from machines that lived only minutes on the surface. Some shapes captured by the probes were so strange that they sparked wild speculation. In 2012, a few Russian scientists claimed they saw something moving, objects that looked like disks or scorpions. The images spread online, fueling stories of possible alien life. But further analysis debunked that idea. What many saw as creatures were actually lens caps, ejected by the landers and caught in strange angles by the low orange Venusian light. Still, the landscape raised serious questions. The cracks and fissures aligned with radar data from later missions like Venera 15 and 16, which used orbital imaging to map the surface. These confirmed that Venus has complex geological features, possibly even past tectonic activity. The planet's crust wasn't static. It had been shaped by enormous pressure and heat, leaving scars that stretch for miles. One of the most impressive findings came from Venera 13 and 14, which carried gamma spectrometers. These tools analyzed the chemical makeup of surface rocks, revealing a composition similar to alkali basalt. That means Venus's surface shares traits with volcanic rock on Earth. While the planet is brutally hot and pressure-packed, it's also made of the same ingredients that shaped Earth's continents. This discovery helped link the geology of our two worlds, even if their stories took very different turns. But understanding the terrain was only half the victory. The real triumph was technical, how the Soviets managed to land probes on a planet with temperatures hot enough to melt lead. To appreciate the brilliance behind these missions, we need to look at what the Venera landers endured and how they captured history in just minutes of survival. Technical triumph on a hellish planet, Venus is often called Earth Twist's twin, but it's a twin from a nightmare. Its surface temperature hovers around 460 degrees, 860 degrees, and the pressure is 92 times that of Earth's atmosphere. That's like standing a mile underwater on a surface hot enough to melt lead. Yet the Soviet Venera landers managed to touch down, transmit data, and in some cases, even take photos. Venera 7 and 8 made history by surviving these brutal conditions. Venera 7, launched in 1970, was the first spacecraft to soft land on another planet and send back data. It lasted just 23 minutes after touchdown, but it proved that landers could survive, even briefly, in Venus's punishing atmosphere. Two years later, Venera 8 went even further, operating for over 50 minutes, long enough to transmit detailed readings from the surface. What's incredible is what these probes carried. Venera 13 and 14 were outfitted with color cameras, microphones, drills, and spectrometers. They recorded wind sounds on Venus, the first audio ever captured on another planet. They took panoramic color photos. They even drilled into the rocky soil to analyze its chemistry. These weren't just landers. They were full-fledged laboratories in miniature, crammed into heat-shielded pods barely the size of a washing machine. Even in death, they gave us clarity. Venera 8 showed that despite the thick cloud cover above, the atmosphere near the surface was relatively clear. It was bright enough, comparable to an overcast Earth a day, to take photographs in natural light. This data helped guide the design of future probes and confirmed that, despite its hostility, Venus was fully accessible to robotic explorers. But once those photos and sounds reached Earth, something strange happened. Among the rocks and clouds, scientists spotted shapes that didn't quite belong. Could they be signs of life or something else? Let's dive into the mysterious case of Venus's alleged creatures and the scientific uproar they sparked. Cold case for alien life? 
In 2012, researchers looking back at the Venera 13 photos noticed something odd. Small objects that appeared to move between frames. One looked like a scorpion, another like a disc, given. That Venus was thought to be lifeless. The possibility of motion set off alarm bells. Headlines about Venus life forms began surfacing, but not everyone was convinced. When examined more closely, the mystery faded. Scientists concluded these were lens caps or probe components that had landed awkwardly and shifted slightly. The idea of alien life was quickly dismissed by most of the scientific community. Still, the excitement highlighted how little we had visually explored Venus and how much our imaginations filled in the gaps when data was unclear or rare. Then, in 2020, the idea of life on Venus took a sharp turn. A team from MIT claimed to detect phosphine gas in the planet's upper atmosphere. Phosphine is associated with microbial life on Earth, making it a potential biosignature. Suddenly, Venus wasn't just hot and dead. It might be chemically active in a way we didn't expect. Could microbes survive in its cloud layers? The theory led to a rush to re-examine old data. One source of hope, the Pioneer Venus mission from 1978. Its data is still stored on microfilm at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, locked away undigitized. Some believe it might contain traces of phosphine missed the first time around. But for now, the debate continues. Could we be overlooking subtle signs of life, or are we just seeing noise in the data? Even if there's no life hiding in Venus's clouds, its story matters, because it could be a warning. Looking at Venus is like looking at Earth's future through a cracked mirror. What happened there may already be beginning here. Let's explore why Venus is more than a mystery planet. It's a reflection of what could go wrong on our own world. Venus as a mirror for Earth. Venus wasn't always hell. Scientists believe it may once have had oceans, possibly a climate like Earth's, but something changed. Venera 4 measured the atmosphere and found it was 96% carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas. That thick atmosphere traps heat, creating a runaway greenhouse effect. It's a terrifying model of what could happen to Earth if climate change spirals out of control. Another key difference, Venus has no magnetic field. On Earth, our magnetic field protects us from solar wind and radiation. Without it, Venus's atmosphere was stripped over time, losing water and making the surface even less habitable. This missing shield is a cautionary tale. It shows how essential magnetospheres are for life to survive on any planet. But Venus isn't just a doomsday lesson. It's also a case study in how two similar-sized planets can evolve along very different paths. Venus and Earth started with nearly identical ingredients. One grew lush and blue, the other ended up toxic and dry. That divergence makes Venus incredibly valuable for understanding planetary evolution and habitability. As climate models become more advanced, scientists are turning to Venus for calibration. Tracking how it got so hot, so fast, helps refine Earth's climate predictions. It also shapes the way we look at exoplanets, worlds orbiting other stars. If we understand Venus better, we might be able to spot warning signs on distant planets or avoid repeating its fate here at home. So with all this knowledge and these warnings, why did the Venus photos stay hidden for so long? Why weren't they celebrated like Mars landings or Apollo moonwalks? Let's finish our journey by looking at what the declassification of this data means for science, for history, and for our future in space. What declassification changes today? The moment Michio Kaku brought those hidden Venus photos to public view, something shifted. They weren't just old pictures, they were time capsules. Scientists could now compare Venera's grainy snapshots to modern radar maps and satellite imaging. Suddenly, there was a new data source for understanding a planet many had ignored for decades. But the photos also sparked new ambitions. Russia's space agency is now planning Venera D, a mission scheduled for 2029. This new spacecraft will revisit those same landscapes with better cameras, deeper sensors, and longer-lasting hardware. The goal is to go where Venera 13 and 14 once stood and ask deeper questions with sharper tools. Kaku's push also raised a bigger point. Science shouldn't be buried. The call for open science for digitizing old archives like the Pioneer Venus microfilm has grown louder. With today's AI and image processing tools, 
even fuzzy 1970s data can yield new insights. But we can't analyze what we can't access. Finally, the public responded. The release of the Venera images reignited excitement around Venus exploration. For decades, it was Mars that got the attention. Now Venus has recaptured our imagination. It's not just a dead rock orbiting the sun. It's a warning, a riddle, a destination. And thanks to these declassified frames, it's finally being seen in full light. For decades, Venus sat in the background of planetary science. Too hot, too toxic, too strange to inspire the headlines Mars always got. But these declassified photos, now brought forward by Michio Kaku, have changed that. They remind us that exploration doesn't always begin with a rocket. Sometimes it begins with a rediscovered file, a forgotten reel of microfilm, or a scientist asking the right question at the right time. The Venera missions showed us that even in the most hostile conditions, machines could endure long enough to send us images, actual photographs from another world's surface. In those few surviving minutes, they captured more than rock and, and heat. They captured mystery, complexity, and history. Venus may not be home to life as we know it, but it's very much alive. In geology, in motion, Ned's warnings. As Earth grapples with climate change and rising CO2 levels, Venus becomes more than a curiosity. It's a cautionary tale, a world once similar to ours that took a different path, one we still have time to avoid. That's the power of these photos, not just what they show, but what they ask us to reflect on. So whether you're a space enthusiast, a climate scientist, or just someone with a sense of wonder, remember this, the next revelation about our solar system may not come from a future launch. It might already be sitting in an archive, waiting for someone like Kaku or someone like you to look again. Thanks for watching. If this story of rediscovery sparked your curiosity, hit like, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe for more journeys into the unknown. Because sometimes the past holds the key to the future, especially when it's written in stars.